Good evening, everyone, and welcome uh, to the Rosenbach. Welcome to tonight's virtual program, The Ballad of the Hark Weaver, Poetry and Carols for the Season. My name is Alex Ames. My job title here at the Rosenbach is Collections Engagement Manager. I also like to call myself the Rosenbach's Celtic Harpist in Residence, which is a um, skill that I'll be taking advantage of this evening for this program. It's really a pleasure uh, to be able to welcome you into our historic house, into our historic period spaces for this evening's uh, event to experience seasonal verses and music. Tonight's program is quite simple uh, in, in terms of uh, what we are going to be experiencing uh, this evening. The program has two parts. I'm going to recite for you Edna St. Vincent Millay's classic poem, The Ballad of the Harp Weaver, and play some Christmas carols I've selected uh, that I feel capture the spirit and emotion of this magical uh, poem for the season. Before we go any further uh, with the content for the evening, I do wanna take a moment to thank uh, the Rosenbach's Board of Directors Chair and Delancey Society member, Peter Nall and his wife, Eleanor, for their sponsorship of tonight's performance. Their support makes virtual events like this one possible. And I do hope that all of you out there will consider making a donation to the Rosenbach so that I can continue playing the harp all around our beautiful historic house. As a member of the collections and interpretation staff here at the Rosenbach, for me, the most important part of a program like this is really helping all of you understand that we preserve our collections so that you can make use of them, study them, and enjoy them. For that reason, I'm going to ask my colleagues, Ed and Emily, who are kindly facilitating uh, this evening's technical uh, needs, uh, to share some information with you in the chat box uh, about tonight's content uh, and our holdings here at the Rosenbach. We're going to share uh, a link to a relevant Rosenbach podcast episode that I recommend you, you listen to if you enjoy the theme of tonight's program. We'll also share links to some collections guides about Marianne Moore. Uh, we'll share the text of tonight's poem so that you can follow along while I read if you're interested in doing that. And we will also share information about how to search our um, online object muse museum collection database. In the sort of same spirit of focusing on um, our collections and making them available to you, after tonight's program, I will send to you some digital reproductions of material uh, from our collection that connects to the content of the of the presentation tonight that I think that you'll enjoy seeing. So you can look look for that in your inboxes uh, at some point over the next couple of days. With all of those details covered, I want to orient you to what you'll be experiencing this evening uh, in this broadcast. Just bear with me for a couple minutes more of my sort of talking about what we'll, what we'll do, and then we'll get to the music, which I'm sure is why many of you are here. So there are just a couple things you need to know for this event to make sense. The poem I am going to read to you was written uh, by a famous American poet named Edna St. Vincent Millay who lived from 1892 to 1950. She was really one of the United States uh, most uh, famous poets of her generation. And um, in a way that might seem kind of odd for, for us modern Americans to conceive, she was truly one of the biggest celebrities in the United States, not just because, or maybe not even primarily because she was an accomplished poet, but because she went on very well received public recitation tours in which she would recite the poetry that she wrote. And she also had her own radio show uh, which, you know, it, it, on which she would read her, her poetry. Her voice was quite resonant and distinctive. Uh, and this helped her to establish a, a sort of pop culture following that's almost hard to imagine uh, for, for poets today. Um, I decided to broadcast tonight's event from a very special period room here at the Rosenbach on Delancey Place in Philadelphia, the living room of Marianne Moore, who was another famous 20th century American poet. 
Marianne Moore, lived from 1887 to 1972. Uh, and she also, like Malay, was a huge celebrity, not only because of her, her well-received literary works, but because she went on speaking tours and became, especially in New York, sort of a pop culture icon um, and was universally regarded as probably the most important modernist poet in America at the height of her, of her powers and her reputation. Ironically, perhaps given the fact uh, that I've organized the event to happen here in the Marianne Moore room, I can tell you that, that Moore was not very fond of Edna St. Vincent Millay's poetry, largely because uh, Moore found it to be too reliant on traditional forms and also to be too sentimental and emotional, which are some of my favorite qualities of Edna St. Vincent Millay's work. However, these two women, Marianne Moore and Edna St. Vincent Millay, are incredibly important figures in American literary history. So I think it's actually quite appropriate to be reading and celebrating the work of Edna St. Vincent Millay in the living room of Marianne Moore. The Rosenbach, uh, as some of you may be aware, is home to the papers of Marianne Moore. We are really the global research hub of um, Marianne Moore studies because we hold her papers and her living room where I'm now sitting. Marianne Moore donated the contents of her living room to the Rosenbach. Um, so that's how I am sitting in, in Marianne Moore's Greenwich Village uh, apartment living room here at our museum. We also hold a few uh, printed uh, copies of Edna St. Vincent Millay's books, as well as one letter that Edna St. Vincent Millay wrote in her own hand. So there, there are some clear connection, co collections connections to both of these very, very important authors. I want to take a couple moments to tell you about this poem that I'm going to read, The Ballad of the Harp Weaver. An important thing to know about Edna St. Vincent Millay is that she grew up in a New England household in which her mother was really um, you know, a hardworking figure who uh, sacrificed some of her own well-being and happiness to enable her children to receive good educations and you know, have a good chance in life. Um, the Ballad of the Harp Weaver tells the tale of a little boy whose mother makes the ultimate sacrifice for his well-being. And the character of this little boy can really be read as representing Edna St. Vincent Millay herself, although she did change the gender of, of the main character of the, of the narrator of this poem. The term ballad, which is in the title of, of the poem, is really important in understanding the poem's significance. A ballad is a form of poetry organized around four lines with an obvious rhyming structure and very steady, predictable beats. The ballad harkens back to Celtic legends and New England traditions, and that's exactly the spirit that Millay captures in this verse. The setting of the poem is a cold cottage on Christmas Eve night, as the little boy who narrates the story shivers with the cold. But something magical happens on Christmas Eve as his mother plays her harp. The musical instrument on which she plays becomes a loom, and she weaves uh, clothes for her son. The most important line in the poem, which occurs again and again, is, and I quote, the harp with a woman's head, end quote. It's really interesting to think about, uh, perhaps of greatest interest to me, seeing as I play the harp, but I think for understanding the meaning of the poem, we all should linger over the question of what the harp represents in Edna St. Vincent Millay's poem, and especially why it was important for Millay to emphasize that the harp had the carved ornament of a woman's head on it. I interpret this image as a really canny metaphor on Edna St. Vincent Millay's part for women's economic and social labor, especially labor that happens inside a domestic space, which is often seen as ornamental, or lacking in value in patriarchal societies like um, Western societies of which um, Edna St. Vincent Millay was a part. Um, in the mother's hands, the harp becomes a powerful tool uh, for production uh, via the, the, the sort of miracle of the harp turning into a loom. 
So how can we connect this poem to Edna St. Vincent Millay's own life? Well, interestingly, her mother actually had a little lap loom on which she would weave hair. And one of Millay's sisters uh, recounted late, many years later that their mother refused to teach her children how to engage in this craft because she didn't want them to know how to use the loom. Family correspondence suggests that, that Edna St. Vincent Millay's family really loved this, this poem. Um, and they recognized that it was essentially um, a sort of a story about their own growing up experiences. So I would propose to you that what we have in this poem um, reflects a number of different themes that Edna St. Vincent Millay wants us to consider. The high cost of poverty on family life, the love of a parent for her child, the economic and social injustice that women frequently face, as well as, um, in keeping with the season and the setting of the poem, uh, the significance of the Christmas Eve setting and the idea of, this, of the mother, the, the harp weaver, um, being almost a Mary-like figure uh, on Christmas Eve night. Um, another line that occurs in the poem, which you will hear as I read it, is that uh, this, the, the harp weaver is weaving, quote, clothes for a king's son. Um, so there, there are very obvious allegorical traditions shaping this work as well. I think you'll really enjoy the literary selection. Um, so I am now going to momentarily leave, leave you at, at, from this location. I'm going to scooch over to the harp and I will uh, begin the program by playing two Christmas carols for you. And uh, just to get us all in the right headspace for engaging with the poem itself. So bear with me for one moment while I rearrange myself and get my sound system set up appropriately. And then I will uh, do a little harp playing for you. Thank you. 
Okay, so those were two carols, uh, very traditional uh, German and Celtic carols to start off our evening together. And now I would like to do my reading from uh, Edna St. Vincent Millay's Ballad of the Harp Weaver. And I'm just going to show you uh, the book that I have here for you to see. This little pamphlet uh, was printed by Frank Shea uh, in New York in 1922, if I recall. Let me just check the date here on the title page. Yes, 1922 by Frank Shea. And you can see in this actual Rosenbach accession to collections object from which I'll be doing the reading tonight, the beautiful frontispiece of the harp weaver with her son. And here's the title page. Other illustrations appear um, in the volume. So I will be able to share those with you as well as we proceed. So let me just tuck in here and I will begin the reading of the Ballad of the Harp Weaver by Edna St. Vincent Millay, delivered to you uh, from this first edition pamphlet, part of the Rosenbach collection. Son, said my mother, when I was knee high, you've need of clothes to cover you, and not a rag have I. There's nothing in the house to make a boy breeches, nor shears to cut a cloth with, nor thread to take stitches. There's nothing in the house but a loaf end of rye, and a harp with a woman's head nobody will buy. And she began to cry. That was in the early fall. When came the late fall, son, she said, the sight of you makes your mother's blood crawl. Little skinny shoulder blades sticking through your clothes and where you'll get a jacket from, God above knows. It's lucky for me, lad, your daddy's in the ground and can't see the way I let his son go around. And she made a queer sound. That was in the late fall. When the winter came, I'd not a pair of breeches nor a shirt to my name. I couldn't go to school or out of doors to play, and all the other little boys passed our way. Son, said my mother, come, climb into my lap, and I'll chafe your little bones while you take a nap. And oh, but we were silly for half an hour or more, me with my long legs dragging on the floor a rock, rock, rocking to a mother goose rhyme. Oh, but we were happy for half an hour's time. But there was I, a great boy, and what would folks say to hear my mother singing me to sleep all day in such a daft way? Men say the winter was bad that year. Fuel was scarce and food was dear. A wind with a wolf's head howled about our door and we burned up the chairs and sat on the floor. All that was left us was a chair we couldn't break, and the harp with a woman's head nobody would take, for song or pity's sake. The night before Christmas, I cried with the cold. I cried myself to sleep like a two-year-old. And in the deep night, I felt my mother rise, and stare down upon me with love in her eyes. I saw my mother sitting on the one good chair, a light falling on her from I couldn't tell where, looking 19 and not a day older, and the harp with a woman's head leaned against her shoulder. Her thin fingers moving in the thin, tall strings were weave, weave, weaving wonderful things, Many bright threads from where I couldn't see were running through the harp strings rapidly and gold threads whistling through my mother's hand. I saw the web grow and the pattern expand. She wove a child's jacket and when it was done, she laid it on the floor and wove another one. She wove a red cloak so regal to see. She's made it for a king's son, I said, and not for me but I knew it was for me. She wove a pair of breeches quicker than that. She wove a pair of boots and a little cocked hat. 
She wove a pair of mittens. She wove a little blouse. She wove all night in the still cold house. She sang as she worked and the harp string spoke. Her voice never faltered and the thread never broke. And when I awoke, there sat my mother with the harp against her shoulder, looking 19 and not a day older. A smile about her lips and a light about her head and her hands in the harp strings, frozen, dead. And piled up beside her and toppling to the skies were the clothes of a king's son, just my size. So that's the poem, The Ballad of the Harp Weaver by Edna St. Vincent Millay. And I just want to highlight for you um, a beautiful illustration on the final page of the verse. There you see the harp weaver uh, and the pile of clothes toppling to the skies. So I hope you enjoyed that, that poem. Uh, I will now return to the harp uh, and play with play two more carols for you.
I think you will agree with me uh, out there in the virtual world that Edna St. Vincent Millay's poem, The Ballad of the Harp Weaver, weaves a tale that is both tragic and triumphant and a testament to the power of love and family, especially at Christmas time and during the holiday season. I hope that you have enjoyed this glimpse into the Rosenbach's collection, the time we've been able to spend together in the Marianne Moore Room in our historic house here at the Rosenbach. And I just want to thank you so much for spending a little bit of time this holiday season with me. I want to thank uh, my colleagues, especially Emily, Ed, and Andrew, who have provided so much technical support, 
for making tonight possible. And I want to wish all of you a very happy holiday season, a joyous new year, and I greatly look forward to seeing you again at the Rosenbach very soon. Thank you all and good night. <laughs>